June 5th, 2010, at 4 p.m. A woman flags down a taxi. The taxi driver stops. An elderly man named Hector Manuel Nerio. The woman gets in, asks to be taken to Nuevo León, which is 80 miles away from the bus stop that they were near. The woman states that she missed her bus and needs a ride to Nuevo León, since that's where her home is located. Once on the road, the woman asked the driver to take a back road, which was basically a small dirt road because she was going to meet up family there. And the family that she was going to meet up with had money that she needed to collect. The driver agrees and drives her until they come across a hill. That That's when he says, I'm not going to go any further. The woman then pulls out a knife and begins to swing at him. He gets out of the car and she begins to beat him. This woman, who was a calm, just regular woman, becomes a very vicious and aggressive woman. He then falls back and the woman immediately takes out her knife and tells him to walk. When he walks down the hill, he sees two men standing near and immediately just makes a run for it, feeling inside that there is something bad about to happen. There, he runs near a farm, and his pursuers were right behind him. That's when the farm owner comes out with a rifle and tells them to leave and helps the driver because he sees that he's wounded. They immediately call the cops, and they arrive within less than 10 minutes. Hello, I am The Grin, and joining me tonight is the lovely... Amari. Welcome to our podcast, a place where we do not shy away from the gruesome details where some things may be triggering and hard to hear. Listener discretion is advised, so get yourself in the right space of mind, and let's talk about dark shit. All right. Yes, Amari? I'm sorry. I was trying not to say anything or laugh when you said... Once he saw, when they were on the other side of the hill, once he saw those two men, he thought something's bad about to, ha- about to happen, so he just booked it. Yeah. Why didn't you think of that beforehand when she took out a knife or she started swinging at you? Yeah. That's when, right when you see two men, like, no, this is bad. I, Honestly, I would have thought it from the beginning, like, you want me to drive you 80 miles away? That's going to be really expensive. I mean, people do it all the time. Is a hum is hum- How long is 80 miles away? 80 miles away? That would be from here to... What's what's a good distance? Is it an hour? Oh, no. It's it's more than an hour. hour. Okay, see? It's like two hours. That's that's why I say it's going to be expensive. That's an expensive cab drive. But That's what I would have thought from the beginning. But mm, there are people who do it. Okay, I'll I'll give you that. Yes. But then she says, I want to take the back roads because I'm going to meet family there and they're wealthy. Yeah. See, I don't, maybe I just don't trust people, but that's number two. I'm like, no, no. No, I'm not going to go there. (laughs) You're, you're, no, this sounds wrong. You know, wealthy people, get them to come pick you up then. Yeah, that is actually pretty valid. But I think in my opinion, I think he thought that he would listen to her and then book it. But when he saw the two men, he thought, oh, maybe now they're going to overpower me. I feel I feel like he thought in his mind at that moment that he could take on the woman. Okay. And, but he grew worried when he saw two other people there. He could be just like a nice guy and just doesn't think of all the other bad things. <laughs> Probably. Um, but yes – Today, we're going to talk about a serial killer, and this is the first case that I'm going to be talking about where it is a requested case. Somebody, a listener, actually wanted me to talk about this. Ah, uh, yay. Thank you. Of course. Of course. Uh, thank you. You guys can always submit cases that you want us to talk about. And thank you for the person who requested this case. Um, I'm not going to mention who it is because I didn't ask them if they wanted to be mentioned. 
But in the future, if you do submit cases that you want us to talk about, let us also know if you want us to like share your handle or anything. And we can definitely do that. But tonight, we're going to talk about Cristina Sanchez Esquivel, who was born in 1979 in Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico. Her family was very poor, like very, very poor. I'm just saying, this is like second in a row, you talking about Monterrey. Oh, yeah. What is your thing against them? There is nothing against them, you okay? Don't want... You know what? You're like, I'm never visiting there. In my defense, you know. in my defense... This is a requested one. I didn't look into this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give you that. So, yes. Um, this woman grew up very poor. It was said that having multiple articles of clothing and undergarments was a luxury that her family just couldn't afford when she grew up. As a young girl, Christina grew up being a victim of molestation. And on multiple occasions, many people around her who were supposed to protect her, took advantage of her. Eventually, Christina became pregnant at the age of 16 and gave birth a few months later. Her first child, a daughter named Maria, and then later on, as the years went by, she would eventually give birth to another five children. Since she was a child of abuse and neglect, she made sure to give all the love she can to her kids, wanting to make sure that she was always there and that nobody would ever take advantage of any of her kids. Neighbors described her relationship with her kids as very loving. She was a doting mother. She was always there for them. They also described her as a very hardworking woman, working multiple jobs, jobs as a plumber, in construction, to help her family and help her kids. However, they also stated that when it came to her husband, she was a very jealous woman. Even though, something that nobody knew, she was having an affair that she hid from everyone. An affair with a man that we will get into later. Now, there was also a part of Cristina's life that nobody knew about. A very dark part. She was a woman who was basically abused her whole life. And with that abuse came anger. And she wanted to do, she wanted to take that anger out on very specific individuals. So let's talk about June 5th, 2010. When Christina was making her getaway with the taxi of the driver from the introduction, the cops immediately pull over the taxi and arrest Christina since she matched the description that the driver gave. But police couldn't believe that this calm woman who just looked like honestly any other individual could harm a driver and the way he described her with somebody who had vicious looking eyes, they couldn't believe that this woman was the attacker. She cooperated and followed them, went to the went to the interrogation room. When she was asked why, she started to confess a string of crimes, crimes that they were shocked about. Now, police immediately started to connect some dots when she started to describe not only what she did to the first driver from the introduction, but to many other drivers, because the police also had a list of missing persons cases on their hands. And the way Christina described a few of the men that she would torture matched the missing people's report. Now, all the men that Christina attacked were all taxi drivers, and they were all men from the ages of 50 to 60, with the exception of one victim. They were all also last seen giving a ride to a woman who matched Christina's description. When police showed her pictures of these men, she signaled the picture of Abel Hernandez, 68. She confessed, she confessed to killing him and disposing of his body in a well. She then went on to describe, without much remorse, 
the death of another driver who fought back. Fighting back was a big no-no in her eyes. She wanted these men to just take it, basically. And if they fought back, that basically meant, I want you dead. So are these people that, or are these guys that she's going after, like, one of the family members who molested her when she was younger, they were a taxi driver? No, but I have a theory. Oh, so you don't even know. You have a theory. I have a theory. Oh, okay. Which we'll get to my theory in the end. Right now, I'll present you the facts, and you can make your own conclusions. While I make my conclusions along the way. (laughs) Yes, you can make your conclusions along the way. So she went on to describe the murder of a man who fought back. She described how it angered her, and she described how after beating him and stabbing him together with a few accomplices the two men that were waiting on that hill together they grabbed some rocks and basically stoned him to death after they did this they dragged the body to a well this well is going to be a very significant thing in this case Um, it's pretty important they would dispose of the bodies of each of their victims in this well. And this well, she went on to describe or named it as La Boca del Diablo, which translates to... Mouth of the Devil. Mouth of the Devil. She stated that they needed to make sure to dispose of the body and not leave any traces. And the well was a perfect spot. Nobody goes there. It seemed like it was abandoned. And it there's no humans that live near it, apparently. Okay, I was going to say, I'm like, is it somebody's drinking well? No, well, it is a drinking well, but nobody lived near there, according to reports. That's how zombies are made. Yeah, right. And she explained to police that the reason she targeted older men was because they were easier to hunt than younger men. Um, It was harder for older men to fight back, basically. They did, but they had no chance against Christina. Christina was a woman who was, who had a bigger build and she basically worked hard labor all her life and was somebody who didn't mind being aggressive and well, you overpowering said she was, people. She worked in construction, you said. Yes, right? that's correct. Plus, she had two extra men helping her as well. Exactly. And the two younger men, they were younger, actually. The two men. Her kids. No. Okay. No. I was like, oh, no. I was like, <laughs> no, she didn't. She, I don't, she never crossed the line there with her kids. Um, but one of them was 27 year old Aaron Perez. And then the other one was a 15-year-old whose identity we don't know because, or at he's least I couldn't find it because he's a minor. But it wasn't one of her kids. 15 years old. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. He's and the reason why they did this was because, one, they targeted older men, easier to kill. And two, they were taxi drivers. So the plan was kill the men, dispose of the body, and get their cars, and sell their cars which became their kind of like business that they would run. So the taxi drivers over there don't have like specific yellow cab or white or anything like that? Actually, no. Um, Some of them do. Some of them say taxi on it, but they're not all like uniform cars where they're all yellow. So it's like an Uber using your own car? Yeah. Oh, okay. Most of the time it is. There, there are a few that have taxi labeled on it, but honestly, most of the time, yes, it's like an Uber, basically. However, this whole chasing after older men wasn't always the case. For example, the case of Omar Perez, who was 31 years old, he was killed the same way as the others. He was beaten and forced out of his car. And then once dead, he was dragged out to the well and then dumped there. Omar had been missing for well over a month. And when she confessed to his murder, 
they realized that they had a serial killer in their hands. On June 7, 2010, when police realized that this woman basically confessed to disposing of all her victims in this well, they decided to, along with a few family members who had reported their family missing, gathered near this well that Christina directed them to. And the police, what they did is they used a camera and connected it to a pole and then basically brought it down to see if they could see any of the bodies still there. They couldn't. That well was very deep. It was very dark, and they didn't see anything. However, when they pulled the pole that pulled the camera out, they saw pieces of hair wrapped around the camera and blood on the pole. There was hair? There was hair. Wait, so that means some of these guys actually had long hair. Yes. Unless there was a woman in there. Yes. There was, they never attacked any woman, so they say. That's so that's how they figured out, like, okay, there's something down there because there's there's hair right here. There's hair. There's human hair. Oh, no. Yes. And that's when they decided to hire experts to go into the well and try to recover a few of these bodies. They managed to find a photograph of a young girl. That's when they realized they found another victim, Abdiel Mendoza Hernandez who always carried a photograph of his granddaughter with him. Aww. And that was the image of the little girl that they found. He had been missing for two months. Police continued to question Cristina about her victims, to which she confessed to the murder of her lover as well. That affair that she was having, she grew tired of it and eliminated Martin Tobar Zavala, who had been missing for over a month. That makes sense. It's easier than to break up with somebody, just murder them. <laughs> right? It's so, it's so That easy. makes sense. Yeah. I don't have to hear from you ever again. You can't call, <laughs> you know, call me or come crawling back or whatever. Just kill them. Yeah, just be gone with it or be done with it. On June 10th, a man arrived at the police station claiming that he had also been a victim of Christina and survived. So... This individual stated that he gave Christina a lift, and when she decided to basically tell him to go in the middle of nowhere, she took out a knife and began to stab him. When he pulled over, she forced him to the trunk of the car, and then she sped off. That's when he kicked the trunk door as hard as he could and then made a run for it while she was driving. She pulls over, and he described that they were in the middle of nowhere. He didn't know where he was, but it was just a big open field, and she began to chase him. Luckily, there were a few bushes, and he hid between these bushes, and Christina must have given up and just went back to the car and drove away. You know, it's crazy. Now, now a lot of cars and their trunks, they have um a way to unlock it from inside the trunk. Oh, like really? there's a button or something you pull that opens a trunk. I didn't know that. I know that because long ago I had a Cadillac and the trunks are huge. They're insanely huge. Yeah. And I think one time I was talking about like, oh, you know, anybody can get like stuck inside of there. And then it came into a conversation about like, Mob, mob bosses and stuff like that. Anyways, using Cadillacs. I think I think they were used, but inside of it, and we got curious and looked inside. Like, oh my god, there's a way to unlock it. And you can actually open the trunk from inside. Huh. So I wonder if not just Cadillacs have that. And this wasn't. You said this happened in 2010. 2010. I think I found this out about oh around the same around time. Around the same time, actually. Oh. Uh. To. 2011 is when I found out that it had it. Now I'm curious because I did not know that. I might just look in my car. I know. <laughs> Everybody check your cars. Everybody crawl see, into your trunks and <laughs> see if you can get happens, out. this ever happens, you'll know. <laughs> just don't lock yourself in there. Make sure you take your keys with you. <laughs> so he ran and hid, in, hid between some bushes, and he realized that he left his phone in the car. 
Christina drove off with the taxi car. And his wife, back at home, began to grow worried because it was getting so late and he hadn't arrived home yet. So what she did is she immediately started calling him. Christina, being near the phone, picked up and basically told the wife, I'm having an affair with your husband. Do not bother us. Stop calling. Oh, my God. Yeah. Crazy bitch. But his wife did not believe anything she said. She kind of suspected something off. She had a really bad feeling. And she didn't listen to her. What she did is she called the cops. She's like, my husband is missing and I need your help. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, some girls nowadays would not do that. I know. They would be leaving. I know. When I, I read that when I read that part, I was like, yeah, there's people who would just like hang up and they're like, you know what? F him. That's a very loyal wife. That is. She's very trusting. That's good. She is very, very trusting. He never reported to police because he was scared that she would come back for him. And he also heard that other taxi drivers have been going missing around the area and nobody has seen them since. So for that reason, he just decided to stay low. This kind of reminds me of how I forgot there's certain cases out there that the killers would target prostitutes. And the prostitutes, if if one got away, they said that they heard about other prostitutes gone missing. And so nobody, the police are not going to believe them because of what they do. So they don't say anything to the police. Yeah. I, I mean, I get that. And I've heard like of, I've heard of other cases that are pretty similar. I mean, I talked about the Roar Cannibal, how he left a victim and the reason she never went forward was just because, what was it? I think they were just worried that he would come back, and she was just a little girl. So there are many people who, whatever reason, just don't go to police. But they're victims, so, you know, I don't know how I feel about that. I think it's different when they're victims. They have a different mindset because of all this that already happened to them. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know if it's, I don't know how to feel about it, like expected of them, expected of them to go to police and report it, but they're frightened, so. Yeah, fear overcomes it. Fear yeah. is scary. Yeah. Days later, police detained her accomplices. Again, one was Aaron, Aaron Perez Diaz, who was 27, who... In some reports that I read, apparently she was having an affair with. Other reports didn't state that, so take that with what you will. And then the 15-year-old, who she never had any, um, in none of the reports that I read, did it state that she had any sexual relationships with him. And I doubt she would. Um, Is the 27 and the 15-year-old related? No. Did they know each other prior to this? Friends. They were just friends? Friends. Okay. But his identity was never revealed. Again, minor. So. Why is a 20, Why is a 15-year-old being friends with a 27-year-old? My thoughts exactly. But I feel like, I don't know, maybe gang or mm, okay. maybe prior relationship. I don't know. But theories like that. And then on June 14th, 2010 of that same year, police managed to recover a body. That was 272 meters down a down the well that Christina had mentioned. The next day, they managed to recover another body. This one was the second body that they recovered was further along the stages of decay. And they tried their best to pull the body up without the body basically falling apart. Falling apart. It was very difficult. And I, I might post the diagram of the equipment that they used because they had, it was pretty cool when I was looking up a video of it. It was this, um, the contraption. I'll, I'll post it. I'll post it. And that it's way not you guys, like, a, like a crane. It's like a crane, but the well was so small. Um. Yeah. It was a very difficult way to, um. Or a difficult task to recover all the bodies. So it was narrow. It was very narrow. And I'll post a picture of the well, too. 
day for you guys to make that. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, is what I'm, I'm saying. I'm curious. I want to see what it looks like now. Then they eventually recovered five bodies, which were the five victims of Cristina. When she was asked why she killed these men, she responded to the police that deep down in her, she had extreme hatred against men. Men had always abused her. Men had always taken advantage of her. She was never, she never saw any love or care from any man in her life. I mean, one of the men who allegedly abused her when she was growing up was her own father. So she wanted to take her anger out and she thought that this would be the best way. And this way she could also earn money for her family. Didn't you say that she gave birth at a young age? Yes. Could it have been one of her family members? That also wasn't on any other of the articles that I read. Never did it state the father of her first child. I know that she eventually got married and had a husband. Um, I don't know if he's the one who fathered the rest of the kids, but yes, never did it mention who the father of that first daughter is. And during all of this that she's doing Mm -hmm. up until 2010, yes, is she still married? Yes, she is. So she's, she's having this fun little secret life that she kept really well hidden from everybody. So her husband didn't think Nobody. anything weird of like, where is she going to in the middle of the night? No, nobody knew. Even neighbors, neighbors were extremely shocked when police arrested her. They could not believe that Christina was behind these horrific acts. And honestly, when I was looking up the articles for this case, most of them literally were titled loving mother gets arrested or loving mother turns serial killer. It was all like mother this and then vengeful killer. Is it because, Oh my God, she's a mother who is not mal, you know, mistreating her kids. I think so. Cause it's not always the case, but in a lot of the cases that we come across in true crime, the abused uh, the abused yeah. child basically grows up into an abuser and mistreats their family in very horrific ways. This wasn't the case. She wanted to do the opposite. Well, she did it well outwards of her family. Correct. She made sure never to harm her kids. She redirected. <laughs> yes, that That's is correct. Horrible. So here's my theory as to why she targeted these men. I felt I feel like she targeted older men because of one, her father. I feel like she was taking out her anger. Yeah, she was taking out her anger at, against men, but I feel like she was taking it out on a very specific individual. I never said what he did for a living, huh? Or what job he did, the father? The father, no. That's what I'm thinking. Like, I wonder if it was, like I said in the beginning, taxi driver, one of the family members who did something to her. Possibly, but no, it never stated anything aside from her being abused growing up. We don't know much about her upbringing upbringing aside from that and um, her having kids at a young age. I don't know what to say. I'm like, I don't know if I want to say that. Are they not saying it because it's obvious? They're like, oh, yeah, the, it's obvious that the father, her father is her firstborn's father. It's obvious that, you know, he was the he was also driving car, or cab or whatever at one point. I don't know if could I want be. to say that. It, it, I mean, it could be. It's, it's a valid theory, um, but we just don't know. She never stated who the father of her daughter was. But Cristina was eventually sentenced to 195 years in prison for the death of five men. And then Aaron was sentenced to 
152 for his involvement in the crimes. The fate of the 15-year-old was never revealed. I'm assuming, hopefully, there was some justice served and he also got some time, but it, I couldn't find anything of what became of him. Like, I understand him being a minor. They're not going to say his name, but they're not even going to say what he received. No. We only get the adults. And honestly, again, he did I... Adult- Crimes. He did horrible things. He participated. He, um, when I read about um her accomplice Aaron, he was when he was being arrested, he was repeating, going on and on and on about not participating on any of the murders. First of all, he got arrested, and the police didn't mention any murders. (laughs) He gave himself up. (laughs) Stupid. I'm like, okay, what what are what are you doing here? <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> that he was pulled you over for jaywalking. I swear I didn't kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so then what is his <laughs> So he's saying he never killed anybody. So he's what he, he was just killed. in the area and all five to- five times and just happened to see her do this? Yeah, a- apparently. And it was late at night, so we just carry rocks with us. (laughs) So stupid. Um, But yes, I'm glad justice was served there. And he, little sleaze, got the 152. Um, But I guess according to – this is something I didn't know. I don't know if it was just back then, if it's something that's still going on now. I guess it doesn't really matter because – Christina was 31, he's 27, or I guess it does. Um, They serve, they have to serve 60 years, according to what I read, and then they're eligible for parole. So it doesn't matter what you did, it's 60 years? I guess so. Which I thought was very odd. Or maybe that's just what the judge gave. It could be, but it said under Mexican law. Oh. So if somebody's very familiar with Mexican law and how that works, let us know. Because I would imagine you get the sentencing and then you have to serve the certain amount of time and then you're eligible for parole. But then again, that's me growing up in America and that's how it is here. I don't know if they just run things a little bit differently. So you have to serve 60 years and then you're eligible. See, that sounds nice. They should do something similar to the freaking creeps that live here in the States. Yeah, honestly. Because some of them can do horrible things to children and get, in five years, you can get out. Like, what kind of bullshit is that? Anger. Sorry. No, that was, honestly, that's, that's valid. That is that is absolutely valid. And yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Something like that should be introduced here, but I don't know if, again, I don't know if that's actually the case. If it was the case, if it's still going on now. So if you guys are familiar with Mexican law, let us know. Cause yeah, I thought that was really interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. I did not know that. Um, But yes, when the media found out about Cristina and her crimes, they dubbed her La Mata Taxistas, who what what in English translates to the taxi killer, um, because all her victims, with the exception of her lover, were all taxi drivers. I like the way you said it in Spanish more. It sounds eviler. (laughs) La Mata Taxistas. It sounds difficult to say, but also very evil. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I feel like it's just Spanish. It has some flavor to it. You it does. Me? It can sound either like, oh, or that one, the way you said that one, like, oh, that one's evil. Yeah. Okay. Either sexy or evil. I, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's more flavor when you speak in Spanish than when you speak in English. Nothing against, you know, in English, but yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. flavor. Yeah. It's flavorful. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, even like cuss words. Now we're like stirring away, but even like cuss words, it's like, 
Like you really get it out with a cuss word in Spanish compared to in English. I cannot think of any cuss words right now in Spanish. Really? I was going to like start like cussing in Spanish out of nowhere <laughs> in my microphone. <laughs> I don't think you guys would like that. So I'll think of it afterwards. <laughs> I can't think of it. Like when you're like, like, like chingada madre. <laughs> like you're like getting it out. Like you're like oh, chingada madre. Why is it that I can't or imagine like, you Hijo de la chingada. I can't imagine you actually like being mad and saying that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I. Don't. You don't look like a cusser. I don't cuss in Spanish. Because Spanish isn't uh, my native language, so it's something I just picked up. But yes, I don't find myself cussing in Spanish often. If anything, I'll just cuss it, but I'll just cuss in English. By the way, how's my Spanish, people? I was going to say, like, your Spanish is awesome. Like, you could say the most difficult-sounding words, names, just, it's pretty awesome. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I want to throw that in there. So that way people can be like, what? You're not a native Spanish speaker? No. Do you want to put me down? Because I grew up for, I grew up speaking Spanish and now I don't even speak it well. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. Honestly, like, thank you so much for thinking that my Spanish is good. My Spanish is not that good. Honestly, when I go and listen to other people like speak Spanish and like how they like really like have a full on conversation, like a long conversation. I'm just like, wow, that that's pretty cool. Like sometimes I find myself stumbling and trying to find the proper word to express how I feel. But then again, that's me in English as well. So <laughs> go, go out and read some books is what I'm saying. Because you really expand your voca- your vocabulary that way. We're not talking about vocabulary. We're talking about different languages here. <laughs> but that's how I learned. By reading in Spanish? By, by just reading in general. Discovering words. Finding out what they mean. Oh, I thought you were talking about how you learned to speak Spanish. Uh, but yes, that is the case of the matataxistas. I'm going to say it one more time because Amadi over here is just like dance into it <laughs> um yes it w- it's a short one but it's one that was requested so i decided hey why not i'll talk about it i will be posting pictures of some of the crime scene and the device the crane that they used uh, the diagram that they had, basically. I'll post that on Instagram. So make sure you're following us. We're at Let's Talk About Dark Shit. I realized when I was editing a few of my past episodes that I never, or we never mentioned our at. But we're at Let's Talk About Dark Shit on basically everything. So should... I thought you just say the names. You have to say the at part? Yeah. Oh. Horrible social media. I know, like, forgive us. I thought you, I thought it was maybe a given, or you could just write, let's talk about dark shit, and it just pops up. You have to do at. Ah, if you want to find them. I thought you just go to YouTube, type, let's talk about dark shit. Oh. Podcast, and then it pops up. I think we pop up pop up now, now that we have like a few listeners under our belt and we have a few more subscribers. Um, but I don't know if we mentioned it. I think we mentioned it a long time ago, but we haven't mentioned it recently. Uh, on YouTube, we're Let's Talk About Dark Shit, but we, without the I in the shit because of YouTube's regulations. Yeah, it wouldn't let me post it. <laughs> yeah. We were trying our best, but they thought it was a step too far. Yes. So on YouTube, let's talk about dark shit podcast. On uh, Instagram, it's just let's talk about dark shit. Yes. And so is our name on TikTok. Yes, even though TikTok only has like four videos. <laughs> but yes, yeah, it's oh, you know, the same go, thing. Go follow us there. Why not? <laughs> Um, But yes, anything you want to add, Amadi? Mm, Oh, yeah. Just like for this case, since he was giving 
or, you know, he was given the name of somebody to look up. That's pretty awesome if you guys can actually, because I know there's a couple on YouTube who've commented a few names already on certain cases that are up there. So that's, you know what? And these are names I've never heard about. So I'm probably going to do one of them. One of the names I've seen on there. Yeah, this one, I honestly heard about it, but it was just like a brief, like, like, listen to a, to like a podcast that I found like years ago, but it's not one that I actually full on like look in, looked into, even though um, there's not much aside from her reasoning behind it and how she basically killed them. But yes, if you have some requests, let us know. And also let us know if you want to be, what was I going to say? If you want to be included, added, or name announced, dropped. name dropped, and we can definitely do that. Also, let us know what you guys thought about the previous one, not this, uh, not the one previous, the one where we spoke about conspiracies. It's mainly just us and our minds talking about a whole bunch of different topics, all you know, all surrounding conspiracies. Yeah, I felt like that one was a bit of a ramble. Um, my sister listened to it and she was like, "You guys went off topic and started talking about something completely different." But I'm still enjoying myself, and I was like, "Thank you." Yeah, but- so let us know. Is this some? Is it something that you guys like? It's mainly just us talking, like regular. <laughs> Yes. Do you guys like us talking about that kind of stuff? Or do you guys like it regulated where we actually talk about one certain case? Let us know because that one, again, I was testing something new, like a different style. Um, and it's conspiracy theories. I'm interested in conspiracy theories, but the whole reason Amadi and I started this was because of our shared passion or shared interest, I should say, of true crime and uh, dark shit yeah dark evil minds and hearts but uh, we were also curious about aliens and supernatural and conspiracy that's very true conspiracy theories is always something that every time i talk about though it could start with one thing just like it happened in that episode it could start with one way and then all of a sudden i'm freaking five steps to somewhere else talking about Alice in Wonderland. I don't know how it's, it's, it's a rabbit hole sometimes you guys. So we like, yeah, it always happens. Let us know, let us know what you think. Um, feedback is much appreciated. And yes, with that, remember to be well, be safe and see you next time. Bye. Bye.